in 1997, a scrappy pinch hitting junior helped his high school baseball team win their league championship. Three years later, he was a fugitive from the law. Entire neighborhoods were shut down as SWAT teams searched for him. You joined the search around the same time. Well, tonight, that search continues as Rick Siegel crosses the Canadian border to track down Jesse James Hollywood. And we get some more beers over here. It's not too much trouble. Oh. It's a busy weeknight at a pub in Vancouver, British Columbia. An obnoxious patron feels he's not getting his beer fast enough. Oh. So he decides the best way to get a little attention is to throw a few coins at a waitress. Maybe if I give her a penny, she'll, uh, she'll come over and help us, huh? Yeah, how about that, huh? Yeah, yeah that's right. I said that was it, and I walked up to him, and then I basically said, what's your problem? And he just said, I can't get a beer here. And I said, well, I don't need to serve punks like you in here. So I was pretty scared. Usually when you tell somebody, you know, to behave or whatever, they back down. This guy wasn't backing down. He was right in my face. A few weeks passed, but the memory of the obnoxious patron did not. I'm sitting at home watching America's Was Wanted, and all of a sudden they flashed this kid's face on the screen. And I just looked and I said, oh my God, that's the kid. One time I was walking down the street, cut, ran my ass over, bounced on the hydraulic, 27 times. That's why I'm a little bit the kid Sandra thought she ran into was a pint-sized drug pusher named Jesse James Hollywood. He's been profiled half a dozen times on America's Most Wanted for his vicious crimes. Police say at the age of 20, Hollywood controlled a big chunk of the drug scene in Santa Barbara, California. And when one of his buyers fell behind on some drug debts, Hollywood had his henchmen teach the boy a lesson. At Hollywood's orders, the boy's innocent 15-year-old brother was kidnapped, taken deep into the hills of Santa Barbara, found, gagged, thrown into a shallow grave, then shot nine times with a machine gun. Hollywood's cronies confessed to their roles in the brutal murder. The only thing I did was kill. You didn't dig the hole. I didn't dig the hole, all right? Okay. But after three years, Hollywood is still on the run. Last month, we asked you to keep an eye out for this fugitive in Canada, specifically in British Columbia. That's the last place we know he was. We know that he has ties in British Columbia just due to the drug business that he's in, um, that being BC Bud or British Columbia Bud marijuana. And your latest tips indicate Hollywood may still be in British Columbia. We received multiple sightings in Vancouver, from the harassed pub waitress we told you about to party goers at a nearby dance club. The club DJ was surprised to hear we were looking for Jesse James. Well, it's funny because I go by Jesse James a lot of the time. That's one of my aliases, if you will. And uh, I, I thought they were looking for me for something I might have done. That was just a bizarre coincidence. But after looking at the photos, several staff members were 100% sure that Hollywood was recently in the club. At the end of the night, I make a habit of going outside and just keeping an eye on the customers as they leave and such, you know, make sure everything's peaceful. And this guy just happened to be a jackass. He was mouthing off and looking for a fight. Get out of my way, man. I couldn't believe that such a pipsqueak was being such a jerk, you know? It's like, it, you're three apples high, built like a popsicle stick, and you're wanting to fight people. Like, what's wrong with you? You're gonna get your ass kicked. By the time we got to the club, Jesse James Hollywood was gone. But there have been plenty of other tips to keep investigators busy. One of the most promising came from Vancouver Island, where a tipster placed an emergency phone call to police in the town of Parksville. She called our detachment and she indicated that the gentleman that was displayed on America's Most Wanted, Jesse James Hollywood, she figured that he was living in her apartment building here in town. The tipster said this man had the same height, same build, same haircut, only now Hollywood was sporting a beard. Within an hour, the mounted police had interviewed the apartment manager, established surveillance on the suspect and his girlfriend, and developed a strategy to enter the couple's apartment. We never had a chance to do that. We were sitting in our vehicle trying to put our plan of action together when the person that was surveilling the place called and said our targets were on the move. There they are. Yeah, 
got a nice description. There's two of them in the vehicle. He's driving. He's got a beard. He made a right-hand turn on behind him. There they were. So I had no time to discuss what to do or what plans to take, so we immediately took them down, lights and siren. Driver of the vehicle, this is the police. Put your hands up where I can see them. Take the keys from the ignition and drop them outside your door. Do it now. Within seconds, the suspect was in handcuffs. He had no driver's license and told police he had lost his wallet. And there was no escaping the fact he looked an awful lot like Jesse James Hollywood. The suspect that was in my vehicle, he was very quiet. He was described to us as a person that was about five foot five, 140 pounds. This person that I had in front of me that I was booking into cells was five foot five and 146 pounds. The photograph I had of Hollywood showed him with uh, no hair or a brush cut. The gentleman in front of me had a brush cut. But the beard was a bit deceiving. So Constable Dykstra took the picture of Hollywood and did his own low-tech photo touch-up. Hmm, looking more promising by the minute. Was it Jesse James Hollywood? The constable had his answer in a few short hours. No, it wasn't Jesse James Hollywood, and this gentleman's name was Dennis O'Donnell. Dennis O'Donnell is a 24-year-old white male from Texas who was up here with his girlfriend, enjoying the scenery and wanting to have a good life. We came up looking for some peace and quiet and uh, some little tranquility and uh, we, we found a whole lot of action. <laughs> Another case of mistaken identity. And that's the greatest challenge in this case. So many short young men sporting baseball caps and scruff on their chins look like Jesse James Hollywood. And if you think that's an exaggeration, just glance at some of the lookalikes we spotted in one afternoon. Does that mean you should pause before calling in a possible sighting of this cold-blooded fugitive? Police say not for a second. Although these are mistaken identities, there's, there's going to be that one that's not. Tonight, Hollywood could be in Canada or anywhere in the world. To catch him, we're hoping his friends and associates will consider a unique incentive. The reward, it's a $70,000 reward, and, and what's uh, unique about the reward is it's simply for his capture. Not his capture and conviction, like most rewards, just his capture. Because that person wouldn't have to go to court, they can remain completely confidential. Nobody has to know who they are, um, and they can still collect the, collect the reward. If you have any information that can lead to the capture of Jesse James Hollywood, we need you to pick up the phone right now. Call 1-800-CRIME-TV. Congratulations, Ashley. It appears that you managed to nab one of America's most wanted, or at least one America's most wanted look-alike. On behalf of everybody here at AMW, I wish both you and Dennis a lifetime of love, happiness, and as Dennis said in our story, a whole lot of action. Anyway, happy days. Congratulations.